look trace it says racing suspension it must be a good one hey we're back and we're working on a Kmore Kawasaki just like we said last video now if you remember the main thing we were worried about was whether the seven speed freewheel would fit the five speed hub and we're going to go over to bench right now and we're going to see if that if it works okay so here we have the wheel with the five speed hub on it and i just want to show you something if you look this nut is what sits against the frame and you can see there's about a five millimeter gap between where the frame would be and where the sprocket is okay now that's with the five speed hub now i'm going to spin this off i already broke this free it was tight but this is the one thing i always say get get a good freewheel tool don't buy a cheap one i learned the hard way you can probably get away with a, a cassette lock ring, a cheap one, but cheap tool. But uh, the free wheels, they're, they're on there hard. They're hard to get off. So get a good one. And I'm going to screw this on here. And I'm going to show you the difference, see what the little issue is. It's not really an issue. It's something we can solve. But see, now, you see, they're almost level. Okay? So you can see there's really no clearance. Now I could probably get away with just adding a washer on each side, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I have a longer axle, it's about a half inch longer. So I'm gonna take, take this axle out, I'm gonna grease the bearings, put the longer axle in, and then get some shims to make the clearance right. And then we also have the front wheel here. Here's the front wheel. The front wheel, I actually have one of these little uh, quick-release kits. And I'm going to put that on here. And you're going to see in a minute why I'm putting a quick-release on the front wheel. So these things we're going to take care of later. I'm not going to make you watch all this. I'll take the bearings out, clean the bearings, change the axles, get all the gaps right. But you, you know what I do need, Trace? I need something I can clean the bearings with. Could you go look, at, go look on that white bench? Yeah, over there on the bench, the white bench. Oh, you mean the scotch? Yeah, this stuff ain't no good for drinking. It tastes like turpentine. It actually <laughs> tastes like something that would take grease off bearings. So, I guess I'll get some use out of it. All right, so here's some of the parts we got for this bike. This is the most what I'm most excited about. Now, a one-inch threaded neck bike you cannot get a whole lot of front ends for front front suspensions for so this this fork here it's um 80 millimeter travel which isn't great but it's the original was 40 millimeter and it has a compression adjustment which means we can set sag okay so right there the bike's going to work better because it'll be in the travel of the suspension right from the start and it's about the same weight as the original one, original fork, but it's heavier duty. But you probably can see the neck is way too long, right? That's all I can get. That's the only way to sell them. So I have, I have a die coming that I can run the threads farther down and then cut it off. And I have a little cutoff wheel I can cut the little slot in it. So that's plan A. Plan B, if I can't do that, is I'm going to cut it and weld it back together. <clears throat> I know there's a few people probably just fell off their couch hearing that, but it, it'd be fine. I've done this kind of stuff for decades. Never had no problem. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a nice fork. It's a lower cost fork, but um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really improve things. Now, also, now that's 80 millimeter travel. <clears throat> I got this shock here. It's basically a new old stock style shock. It's a, a, a Suntour rad, Radon. And it's an air shock. And it has a lockout, which is nice. It's 165 millimeter long, which is 15 millimeters longer than stock. And it has 38 inches of travel on the, uh, the shock itself. But now, the way this suspension is, it's about a 2.2 to 1 ratio. So we're going to get close to 80 millimeter. We're going to have about 80 millimeters of travel 
in the back also. And because it's a little bit longer, I think it'll match the fork. I think the bike will just come up a little bit overall. But then, like I said, so it's an air shock. So we can adjust sag in the rear and sag in the front. So probably with the person sitting on it that's going to ride it, it's going to sit about the same height. Now, one last thing I wanted to talk about. So here's my uh, one, one by drive. I ordered a 113 millimeter bottom bracket so that I should have the right chain center line. It should be about a 50 millimeter ch chain center line when I put all this stuff together. So it's going to be a pretty cool little bike. I mean, it's a low, low cost bike, but you know, I think it'll be pretty cool. We're really trying, we're trying to find a way to get to a bike park. And uh, I think it's updating it enough that we could do some mild trails with it without any problem. So we'll see what happens. But I'm waiting on the die so I can cut the threads. I'm going to do the work on the wheel, the bearings, the sprockets, have all that ready to go. So the next video we do will be assembling things. I'm not going to do another video on this until I'm ready to start assembling. So until then, see you.